All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. I want to say salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, this is going to be a response video to the brother GMS Watchman. Just a few minutes ago, he put up a video which was entitled Israelite Removal Act. And here's a video, which I'll leave a link to his video where you could watch uh, this particular guy who works for YouTube, an administrator or something, whatever the, around those lines of that title, someone in charge or a representative to give you the news on how they're gonna be deleting and taking down content that YouTubers or anyone who put up that they deem as misinformation. Now, they've been doing this already for a while, even through the heart. Well, let's say the beginning of, you know, the beginning in the middle of this uh, COVID pandemic. You know, they've been taking videos down. I've personally seen on my page and, you know, it's like the video was never there. You wouldn't even notice if it gets about about a week old or too old. You're not looking. You go look for the video and it's just gone. And, um, you know, this is Esau basically putting the famine on this word. And they're ready to roll out. You know, they're ready to roll out this RFID microchip, you know, to the masses to be something considered and taken willingly. Because we know through the scriptures, it's going to be forced upon them, according to Revelations 13, 16. He calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or their forehead. All right. They pushing a reset button. We have to prepare for a more angry world and uh, how to prepare, uh, it means to take the necessary action. What we want to do in Davos this year in this respect is to push the reset button. History would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset. The next time someone tells us uh, that tackling climate change is either too costly or too difficult, I think we need to remind them and remind ourselves of what just is happening right now. Treat the climate crisis like like you treat any other crisis. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate, and rebalance our world. We not only have to demand change, but also create change. And then we need to couple that with new initiatives to equip more people with the digital skills they'll need, not just to have a tech job, but a job that is increasingly tech enabled in almost every part of the economy. At the start of the pandemic, working from home might have felt like a welcome change. Now, with longer days and less interaction, some employees are starting to feel burned out. Some employers are turning to software to monitor what their employees are doing all day long. You need private sector capital 
private sector ingenuity, private sector technology, and private sector capabilities to come to the party. This morning, a mind-boggling report on layoffs. More than 6.6 .6 million Americans filing new claims for unemployment insurance last week, the largest number in a single week ever. We will now start a quite a high number of task forces to look at all the different issues and we will present all those ideas to the people assembled in Davos. And just like that, everything in the world is made right and pure again. The Great Reset. What could be simpler? where they want to reset the world into this digital type world where, digi where technology will be in our everyday life, all right? Technology will be in your body. And they don't like the fact that people is doing their due diligence, all right? Like you got certain guys who expose, who read documents. Man, you got the prophets. I got to say the prophets first because they're giving you the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and the message, the true message. All right, to warn the elect, to warn, condemn, reprove, and rebuke. But you got other guys who really sit down and listen. They go into old documents and they pull out the information to show you that this is all nothing more than just agenda. And it's in a way where they want to force these chips in your body. All right. And do vaccines is really like a, you know, a prelude before the chip to get everyone in condition in a new way of using their body as identification whether the swipe of the hand the scan of the palm of your hand all right this new system that they're implementing but we know that the button the reset button is from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai all right because Esau Edom they're not about to go into this new kingdom you know where everyone is microchipping become a transhuman so i know i said a mouthful i would play the video but it's pretty lengthy so i'll leave a brother's link and i want to grab some precepts all right i wanted to um bring out a few precepts that i jotted down you know because right now you know we supposed to be seeking the Lord 10 times more. And matter of fact, I'm going to get that scripture first since I'm here in the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 28. Now let's start at verse 27. Now let's start at 26. Oh, man. Okay, verse 25. My children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Yahweh, for thou enemy have persecuted thee who was our enemy the other nations and right now in particular Esau Edom okay he's the son of the wicked which persecuted us and brought us into slavery it says but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck so check that out shortly we're gonna see his destruction his destructions within his own agenda which he called himself numbering the people Everyone being microchip where he can monitor and be well, he can sit in this t temple of the most high He could be in the Israelites body. He can determine where you at All right, he can kill you at you know a, bl a, a push of a button You know, he wants to sit in the seat of the most high. He wants to he wants to sit in the throne of the most high All right It says my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as the flock court of the enemies and that's the Israelites, all right? That's the Israelites, you know? It says, uh, really, uh, the elect. It says, uh, verse 27, Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yahweh, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. And this is why, part of the reason why his kingdom is going to crumble, because of his actions, but also because of the cry that's being made through the Lord's elect. He said, be of good comfort, O my children, 
and cry unto Yahweh, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. So we're being remembered of the Lord right now as I speak, okay? Because there's a great awakening that the Lord is doing upon his people, knowing that who we are as a people, who he created us to be, all right, which is Yasha Allah, okay? The Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites. Nothing and nothing has to do with black, okay? Black does not exist in being a Hebrew Israelite because we're all different shades of brown and there's 12 tribes of us, of one family, one nation, okay? So let's get to the point. It says, for as it was your mind to go astray from Yahweh, so being returned, seek him 10 times more. So that's why this is a very important time ever, you know, in all our lives, you know, to be seeking the Lord 10 times more because eventually these devils, they're gonna take away the information and the message of the prophets, of the Lord's prophets, I should say. Okay, the Lord's hopeful elect, and you're not gonna be able to hear this word. You're not gonna be able to understand it. No one is gonna be able to teach you. That's how you learn the word, you get taught. You can't, you're not just gonna wake up one day and then just become this, um, this uh, prophet. It didn't happen that way, that's in the movies, man, okay? In order for you to understand this truth, you will have to be taught by an anointed teacher. All right. So it says, verse 29, for he that hath brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with salvation. So let's move on. Let's go into Romans. This is uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 11. It says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe okay this was written a long time ago but it applies to right now because we can clearly see that this is the time wherein the lord is visiting this earth in which he made there's a global reset all right that these elites are, are are doing and they want to change the world they want to refresh the world all right in their way so they can have more control and power you know for the rest of their lives but that's not going to happen so now is the time not knowing the time that now is high time to wake up out of sleep that now is our salvation nearer than when we believe the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the arm of light. You know, we probably sound like a broken record when we do these videos. I know I feel like I sound like one because I feel like sometimes I'm doing the same video over and over, but it's just the spirit, man. You know, you probably don't like it. I ain't here to entertain you. I'm just here to send a message. You know, whatever which way the Lord uh, put upon me and certain scriptures to pull out, Hopefully you're edified. I hope that I am edifying you, okay? But it says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us now cast off the works of darkness. You're gonna regret not casting off the works of darkness in this very moment when the Lord cut the switch on this economy and shit get real where, you know, there's life and death because that's what we're going into, those darkest hours, all right? Esau is about to lose this world, but he ain't going out without a fight, okay? He has an agenda, the Heavenly Father has an agenda, and the Heavenly Father agenda is really Esau's agenda, but it's a twist to it, okay? There's a stumbling block there to where the Lord is going to use him to, use Esau to destroy himself and bring glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh and his men, okay, his elect. So it says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So it's very important to clean up your act, all right? To not fulfill the lust thereof. You should not be at this moment, you know, fulfilling 
the lust, you know, in a wicked way. You know, the word lust is not a bad word. You can lust after righteousness, things that are, you know, you can lust after food if you're hungry, you know. You can lust after some drink, some wine, some, some um, strong, okay. But when you're lusting after things that are wicked, like another man's wife, okay, then guess what? You're, you're off, you know. You know, you're lusting after your woman on the Sabbath. You're off, all right. Since that's the new thing that's going out. You know, but anyway, let's continue on. Let's go into 2 Corinthians uh, 5 and 11. It says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, matter of fact, let's read, start at 9. It says, Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So we're laboring, man. And y'all, two thirds and people who chime in and, you know, probably laugh at us and, while we do our shows and think all sorts of crazy shit, wicked shit about us, you know, saying we're stupid. Guess what? We're laboring to be accepted of the Lord. Whether you believe the Lord or not, we do. All right? Us of the whole four elect, you know. I, which I hope and pray to Yahweh Bashim that I'll that be one of those men, you know. So, we labor to be accepted of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh when this thing pan out, you know, to be in your face and you got to deal with it, you're going to be in a world of trouble, man. All right? Because this is the truth. The Lord is showing us day by day that his prophecies are being fulfilled in this time. So it says, verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or or bad so you're all going to come and be judged by the lord we all got to come to that seat and that's as individually we judged as nations and we also judge individually as well all right you reap what you sow all right now 11 the point knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men but we are made manifest unto yahweh and i trust also are made manifest in your conscience so these shows we do in labor, we know the terror of the Lord. Because those who know the terror of the Lord fear the Lord. Okay? Believe in the Lord. And it says, we persuade men. So yes, we are persuading you. Persuading you to do what? Alright? Persuading you Israelites. Because that's who this word is for. From the seed of their fathers. Doesn't matter your complexion. Doesn't matter your eye complexion. Your skin complexion. From the seed of your fathers, if you're an Israelite. Right? We persuade you. Uh, we persuade you to follow after righteousness. Alright, anyway, it says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Right? So we persuade men. We persuade men to uh, follow after righteousness and come back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Because the kingdom is near. Okay? We are made manifest unto the Most High. So we're manifest through the Lord. The Lord hath manifest his prophets in the earth to teach according to his prophecies. It says, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So in your conscience, in your heart, your mind, you know, you're going to be thinking about this truth. And you're going to realize that the Lord is a, a terrible power. Okay, going back to his name where the heathens called him Alasaya, Alasaya, all right, demon, uh, demon like power, all right. And you're gonna know that the Lord ain't have the Lord ain't nothing to play with, man. So, and I trust also are made manifest with the conscience. Because once you understand that, you fear. And then guess what? You get your ass together and you get right. Alright. Now I got one more scripture, which is uh in the book of Amos, chapter 8, and uh verse 11. It says, Behold. The days come, say if the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. It says, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh, and shall not find it. And that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. So there's going to come a time where it's going to be a famine on this word 
and it's real soon, man. You know, the more and more they push this agenda, they push for a gradualism, conditioning for you to receive a vaccination with nanotechnology in it going inside your body for you to receive the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, all right? They're gonna bring a famine on the word. It's gonna be a time where you're not gonna be able to get this information and to understand. It's just gonna be a rumor, okay? You heard, but you didn't really fully understand. So seek the Lord while he may be found, because it was our minds to go astray. Seek the Lord 10 times more, excuse me. All right, mixing two scriptures up. But uh, you get the point. So with that, I hope you were edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash, double honest to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.